Hello friends, the IoT data management and compute stack deals with how and where data is filtered, aggregated, stored and analyzed. In traditional IT model, this occurs in the cloud or the data center. However, due to unique requirements of IoT, data management is distributed as close to the edge as possible, including the edge and fog layers. Hello and welcome to our channel Ullas Kumar Gokhale for learning. The topic for today is IoT data management and compute stack. Let us start with the agenda. So first we'll have the introduction to the topic, then new requirements for IoT, then data management in traditional IT, then we'll study the data related problems, then solution to the challenges, then concept of fog, then fog computing, then IoT data management and compute stack with fog computing, then characteristics of fog computing, then edge computing, the hierarchy of edge, fog and cloud and lastly we study the summary. So let us start with the introduction. The data generated by IoT sensors is one of the single biggest challenge in the building an IoT system. So in case of modern IT networks, the data sourced by computer or server is typically generated by the client server communication model and it serves the needs of the application. So whatever data is generated by the client server communication model, it will serve the need of the application. So as per the request from the client, server will provide the data to the client. So in sensor networks, the vast majority of data generated is unstructured and very little use on its own. For example, majority of the data generated by a smart meter is nothing more than a polling data. That is, communication system simply determines whether a network connection to the meter is still active or not. So, that data is not so important. So, then let us go to the new requirements for the IoT. So, as data volume, the variety of objects connecting to the network and the need for the more efficiency increase, the new requirements appear and those requirements tend to bring the need for data analysis closer to the IoT system. So these new requirements include the following. First is minimizing latency. Milliseconds matter for many types of industrial systems such as when you are trying to prevent manufacturing line shutdown or restore electrical service. So analyzing data close to the device that collected the data can make a difference between averting disaster and cascading system failure. So it is better to minimize the latency because the time is very important in that case. Then second is conserving network bandwidth. The offshore oil rigs generate 500 GB of data weekly. Then commercial jets generate 10 terabytes of data every 30 minutes of flight. It is not practical to transport vast amount of data from thousands or hundreds of thousands of edge devices to the cloud. So it's better to conserve the network bandwidth and not transfer the data. The next is increasing load efficiency. So the environmental conditions in one area will trigger a local response independent from the conditions of another site hundreds of miles away. So analyzing both areas in the same cloud system may not be necessary for immediate efficiency. So it is better to increase the local efficiency. So these are some of the new requirements for the IoT. So let us go to the next data management in traditional IT system. So the data management in traditional IT system is very simple. As you can see here, we have the endpoints, which are nothing but the printers, laptops, IP phones, and so on. Then we have the core network, and then we have the data center or the cloud. So the endpoints will communicate over this IP core network to the servers in the cloud, and data is generally stored in the data center or cloud and physically links from the access to the core are typically having the high bandwidth. So access to the IT data is weak because of the high bandwidth of this core network. Then let us go to the next that is data related problem. So bandwidth in the last mile of IoT network is very limited. So when dealing with the thousands millions of devices Available bandwidth may be of the order of tens of kbps per device or even less. So here the latency can be very high. So instead of 
dealing with latency in milliseconds range. Large IoT networks often introduce latency of hundreds to thousands of milliseconds. Then the network backhaul from the gateway can be unreliable and often depends on 3G or LT or even satellite links. So backhaul links can also be expensive if per byte data usage model is necessary. So these are some of the data related problems. Then let us go to the next one. The volumes of data transmitted over the backhaul can be high and much of the data may not really be that interesting because it is simply the data from the polling messages. So that is not much important. Then the next is big data is getting bigger. That means the concept of storing and analyzing all sensor data in the cloud is impractical. Then the sheer volume of data generated makes the real time analysis and response to the data almost impossible. So then let us see what is the solution. The solution to the challenges mentioned in the previous slide is to distribute data management throughout the IoT system. So as close to the edge of the IP network as possible. So wherever data is generated, so close to that we have to have the data management. The best known embodiment of edge services in IoT is fog computing. So when we are trying to put the edge service into the IoT, it is with the help of the fog computer. Then let us go to the concept of fog. So the concept of fog was first developed by Plavido Bonomi and Rodolfo Miller to of Cisco system. So they developed the concept of fog. So in the world of IoT, fog gets its name from relative comparison to the computing in the cloud layer. So just as cloud exists in the sky, fog rests near the ground. So in the same way, the intention of fog computing is to place resources as close to the ground as possible. That is into the IoT device. So the resources, that is the compute and data management that will be put into the as close to the IoT device as possible. Then let us go to the fog computing. So any device with computing storage and network connectivity can be a fog node. So examples include industrial controllers, switches, routers, embedded servers and IoT gateway. So these are some of the examples of fog nodes. So analyzing IoT data close to the where it is collected, what it will lead to it will minimize the latency. Then it will offload gigabits of network traffic from the core network because then we don't have to send the data to the cloud. Then it will keep sensitive data inside the local net. So that means it will enhance the security. So the fog node allows intelligence gathering such as the analytics and the control of the closest possible point and doing so it allows new layer to the traditional IT computing model. So this layer we call it as the fog layer. So here the IoT data management and compute stack with fog computing shown in this figure. So here we have millions embedded systems and sensors with low power and low bandwidth. So we call them as the smart objects. Then we have tens of thousands of multi-service age we call it as the fog layer. So collection, sensing and control that will be done in the fog layer. It will have the capability to do that. Then here we have thousands of backhaul that is the core IPv6 network and then they are connected to the data center or the cloud. So we have the hundreds of data centers or cloud and they will have the servers. So this is how the IoT data management and compute stack with fog computing will be there. Then next we'll go to the characteristics of fog computing. First is contextual local awareness and low latency. So the fog node sits as close to the IoT endpoint as possible to deliver distributed computing. So here we are making use of the distributed computing. So we don't have to transfer the data. Computing will be done there itself. The next is geographic distribution. In a sharp contrast to the more centralized cloud, the services and applications targeted by fog nodes demand widely distributed deployments. So here the deployment will be 
distributed, not centralized, as in case of the cloud. Then next, deployment near IoT endpoints. So fog nodes are typically deployed in the presence of large number of IoT endpoints. So they are at the endpoints. For example, typical metering deployments often see 3000 to 4000 nodes per gateway router, which also function as the fog computing node. So that is how the deployment will be near the IoT endpoints. The next is wireless communication between fog and IoT endpoints. So although it is possible to connect wired nodes, advantage will be there when we connect the wireless access. So that's why because of the large number of endpoints, wireless access will give us the advantage. Then use for real-time interaction. So important fog applications involve real-time interactions rather than batch processing. So the pre-processing of data in the fog nodes allow the upper layer applications to perform batch processing on a subset of the data. That is here fog nodes will perform the pre-processing. So the batch processing will be done with the help of the upper layers. Then let us go to the edge computing. So for fog computing solutions are being adopted by many industries and efforts to develop distributed applications and analytic tools are being introduced at an accelerating space. So this is continuously going on. And the natural place for fog node is the network device that sits closest to the IoT endpoint. And these nodes are typically spread throughout an IoT network. So the fog nodes will be spread throughout the IoT network. Then in recent years, the concept of IoT computing has been push even further to the edge. So in some cases, it now resides directly in the sensors or IoT device. So that we call it as the edge computing. So edge computing is also sometimes called as the mist computing. So if cloud exists in the sky, the fog sits near the ground, then the mist is what actually sits on the ground. So in that way, the edge computing has been done. So the concept of mist is to extend the fog to the furthest possible point right to the IoT endpoint device itself. Computing and the management data will be done in the IoT device. Then let us take example of edge computing. So some new classes of IoT endpoints have enough computing capabilities to perform at least low level analytics and filtering to make basic decisions. So here let us take example. So example is nothing but the smart meters. So each compute capable meters are able to communicate with each other to share information on small subset of electrical distribution grid to monitor localized power quality and consumption. So with the help of this edge uh, devices which are compute capable, it will be able to share the information about the power quality and consumption. So uh, they can inform the fog node of events that may pertain only to tiny section of the grid. So this will uh, naturally include the quality of power delivery to the customers. So that is what is the example for the edge computing. Then let us go to the next that is the hierarchy of edge, fog and cloud. Edge and fog computing layers simply act as first line of defense for filtering, analyzing, and otherwise managing the data endpoints. So this saves the cloud from being queried by each and every node for each event. So the traffic to the cloud will be reduced and there is no need to query the cloud for each and every event. Then this model suggests hierarchical organization of the network compute and data storage resources. So the organization of network compute and data storage will be done in a hierarchical way. So at the each stage, data is collected, analyzed and responded to when necessary according to the capabilities of the resources at that layer. So as the data needs to be sent to the cloud, the latency becomes higher. So the highest latency will be near the cloud and the lowest will be at the edge. So here figure 3 
illustrated the hierarchical nature of the edge fog and cloud computing across the IoT network. So let us see the figure. So here you can see we have low latency here and as we go towards the cloud we have the high latency. So here we have to note that the heterogeneity of the IoT devices also means heterogeneity of the age and fog computing resources. So while cloud resources are expected to be homogeneous, it is fair to expect that in many cases of age and fog resources will be having different operating systems, different CPU and data storage capabilities and have different energy consumption profiles. So we have the age layer where we have the embedded system and sensors the application say endpoint application a endpoint application b so it will have different operating systems and data storing capacity and similarly then next we have the fog computing layer so multi-service edge iot gateway so again it will have the application a fog we call it as the so it will have different operating system and the data storing capabilities and different cpu then next we have the cloud layer where we have the application a cloud is shown here so it will have particular uh, capabilities for the computing and data storage so when we are communicating the age and fog will need some abstraction layer that allows application to communicate with one another so the abstraction layer exposes a common set of apis for monitoring provisioning and controlling the physical resources in a standardized way. So in this way, the hierarchy will be there for the age, fog and the cloud. Then let us go to the summary. So when architecting an IoT network, you should consider the amount of data to be analyzed and the time sensitivity of this data. So that is what we have seen in the last figure in the hierarchy. The highest latency will be near the cloud, whereas at the edge, the latency will be lower so analysis will be done according to the time sensitivity of the data the data with high time sensitivity will be analyzed at the edge whereas the data which can have high latency will be analyzed at the cloud so understanding these factors will help you to decide whether cloud computing is enough or whether age or fog computing would improve your system efficiency so that is what whether we have to put the fog layer and the edge layer that we will have to decide according to that. Fog computing accelerates awareness and response to the events by eliminating a round trip to the cloud for analysis. That means we don't have to send the data to the cloud for so to avoid the need for the costly bandwidth additions by offloading gigabytes of network traffic from the core net. So this will conserve the bandwidth and there is no need of costly bandwidth requirement will not be there. Then. Uh, it will also protect sensitive IoT data by analyzing it inside the company walls because it will be analyzed at the fog or the edges. Then with this, we come to the end of this video. If you have any questions, you can contact me on Facebook, Twitter, Gmail or Instagram. If you like the video, press the like button, share with your friends and subscribe to our channel Ullas Kumar Gokhale for learning. Then don't forget to press the bell icon so that you get notifications for our future videos on this subject internet of things thanks for watching have a nice day